According to the National Alliance for Caregiving, 65.7 million family caregivers in the United States provide important societal and financial contributions toward maintaining the well-being of those they care for. So I thought I knew what successful aging was, and I thought this is the way people should try to live. Keep active, do things, and it's what we think about today, eat right to, to, and take exercise. So I learned all about Alzheimer's because that was when we studied Alzheimer's and stroke and everything at Sanders Brown, and I was chair of it for four years. So <clears throat> it was ironic, ironic that my husband developed Alzheimer's. Now it was a slow, gradual process. And I look back on it and see evidences of Alzheimer's that I wouldn't recognize, I didn't recognize at the time. But then <laughs> it came to be a time when we, we played bridge with a, a lot of a group, about really about eight couples, it was a big group. And he was in charge of the, um, he was called the director of the bridge club. <laughs> Well, it, they all realized he couldn't do it. He just couldn't do the math, he couldn't do everything. So that began, we began to look at it. But I still did not, and this was 15 years ago, and it, Alzheimer's was not as acceptable as it is today. And I was scared if I really realized, and I went to see Dr. Marks Berry, I knew he had it, but I didn't want to admit that because I thought everybody will just dismiss him. They, because we thought, well, what will you say to somebody who has Alzheimer's? They didn't realize that Alzheimer's people have feelings. It's just the same. They are still people. It just can't, can't do everyday things the way you could. And, and they forget. And then things happen, like he took his car to the, to the um, post office, and the people at the post office called me. Ms. Yates, Mr. Yates is here and he can't find his car, you know, things like that. Had to take away the keys to the car. Had to do a lot of things and he got, he walked a little in the neighborhood and got lost. So things happened and we, I had to accept it. Over 12 million caregivers provide care for both an aging person and a disabled child. The care they provide includes administering medicines, feeding, bathing, dressing, providing transportation, coordinating doctor visits, and providing the emotional support that is essential to healing or coping with the disease. I'm in a little bit of a unique situation in that I have a special needs adult daughter and my wife has two special needs adult sisters. My daughter's 33, her sisters are 39 and 40, and all of those three girls are living at home. And uh, Angel, my, my uh, daughter's mother and I are divorced and we share time with her. Uh, my uh, former wife, Angel's mother, has her the majority of the time and I have Angel part of the time. It's probably more like 70-30. My wife's two sisters are living with their 80-year-old parents full time. And uh, it's a nightmare in terms of uh, what happens when we're no longer capable of taking care of them. And uh, I wish I could say, here's what, here's what our plan is and what, here's what we're gonna do. I don't have one. It's very frightening. Right. And now I've got a, a mother who is, uh, is, is in uh, having some health problems, uh, who was 88. And uh, so lots of, lots of decisions are gonna have to be made and, and fairly soon, but I really don't know what we're gonna do. When you have a special needs adult child, it's like having a normal small child in terms of you, you can't leave them alone and so they have to be constantly supervised and that means that they're, you can't do too much spur of the moment. Everything has to be pre-planned. If you need to bring in uh, someone as a caregiver, uh, obviously that you can't do that at last minute in very many cases. And so you're, you're, you just plan your life uh, differently than, than most people, I think. Now your loved one depends on you for their day-to-day -day activities. Family involvement is crucial for this balancing act. However, you must first get a clear picture of what you're dealing with so you can provide the best care possible.
when my father was sick, my parents were still living in Harlan. And we started knowing, noticing that things were just not quite right. But Daddy ended up with Alzheimer's. Um, but we started noticing the memory, repeating things. And the problem was my mother tried so hard to protect Daddy that we really could never get a clear picture of what was going on. And that's very stressful. When you know something's happening, but you really couldn't get that full picture. And you know, mother was just adamant, oh no, nothing's wrong, everything is just fine. Well, by the time we finally realized what was going on, Daddy was so far along into Alzheimer's, and I wish we had been able to step in earlier, not only to help Daddy, but to help Mother. Um, when my father finally moved into a nursing home, that's when we looked at Mom and said, my heavens, look how her health has, has suffered. And I wish we had been able to give her more help and more support that way. But it's hard when you don't know what the full picture is. Even at the very end, mom would, you know, when, when daddy was probably six months away from dying, he was that far along, um, mother would look at me out of the blue and say, do you think anybody knows? And I'd go, yes, mother, everybody knows. You know, if you have a, a 30 second conversation with dad, it's, it's apparent. And it was frustrating because she still wanted so badly to protect him. And, and I think that's wonderful. I think that's, that's really a precious thing. But, you know, to deal with something, sometimes you really have to know what's going on. And, and I think she just wanted so hard to protect him. Caring for the caregiver is often the most overlooked element in providing care for a family member. Sometimes, the person might be oblivious to your need for the emotional refueling of a kind word. Sometimes I think they feel that you're taking over and they don't want to give up those rings. They just want you to do what you've been doing uh, very slowly. Um, working with the, my mom, it was the fact that my mom had uh, many strokes. And, and I used to say to her, and I never could understand, it seems like she would attack me. And then the next day or so, she'd have a mini stroke. So one day I said to her, I said, you know, I said, I can tell when you're gonna have a mini stroke. And she said, how is that? I said, because you always treat me bad. And so she turned to me and with a really big tear in her eye, she said, I don't mean to. And from that day on, I would just laugh it off whenever she got angry with me or whenever she did. And then I would go away and, and it's so, um, it gets so to you because this is the person that took care of you. And then now you in this, you reverse roles and you're taking care of them and they strike back at you. Uh, one of the things that I think is, is interesting, my, my, my mom used to say all the time, I, um, I, whatever happens to me, I hope I never lose my mind. And she got Alzheimer's. The best thing that any uh, caregiver can do is do the best they can. And then when it's all over, there's nothing for you to be regretful for because you've done it. You've taken care of whomever you need to take care of, but you do it day by day and do the best that you can offer. At some point in time, taking care of your loved one can become difficult to manage. When do you consult an attorney to discuss power of attorney or begin to consider putting your loved one in a nursing home? From my perspective as an attorney and as an elder law attorney, one of my goals is, is to try to educate the public as much as possible of the things that I see that people are not ready to grow old with. Uh, the documents are so critical because if we have the proper documents in place, we can handle the financial side of it. Um, as you age, things cost a lot more that you never had to pay for because you can't do them anymore. And one of those things is caregiving. Uh, caregiving, I want to stay home and, and, stay, and take care of my parents. That may be a good idea to a point, but you have to have powers of attorney in place so that you can pay their bills. A lot of times the parents from my parents' generation are not willing to share the information with, with their children. Uh, they're still children. And even though they may be bankers or lawyers or doctors or uh, accountants or just really sharp people, the, the parents aren't going to share that information with them. And it's very frustrating. Few people really have their, their 
estates together enough where, th where their assets are listed so that if a traumatic event happens, people know where their assets are. So, now you're feeling guilty. You put your loved one in a nursing home. What kind of measure of love is this? A measure of love isn't based on where she lives or not, but on your approach to how you care for her in whatever circumstance she's in. And so sometimes when I just say that to a family is, moving her to a nursing home doesn't mean you love her any less. And say that out loud, I think it really helps them rethink what it really means to love and take care of somebody. A lot of it's in the approach rather than in the result. I mean, it wrecked me the day I moved my mom to a nursing home. That was one of the hardest things I did. But as I watched over time, I really think my parents' marriage improved because then when my dad went to see my mother, they could enjoy each other. They had lunch, they could, you know, read the newspaper and fall asleep like he did at home, you know, in her nursing home room and she'd be doing whatever she would be doing. So they could enjoy each other's presence without having to worry about toileting and bathing and arguing whether she was going to take her pills or those care issues because he could hand that hand, hand off the hands-on kind of thing that was providing the stress, and then he could really just enjoy her. And I think it did them both good from that respect, is don't go with the intention of having to care, hands-on, you know. Go and enjoy the relationship then. And I think that that helps as well, just giving permission to, to, to be less vigilant. Because I think they, primary caregivers are on so much. I mean, they're, they're turned on. It's always like they're always waiting for the other shoe to drop, that it's really hard to turn off and to let somebody else do some of the work and really rest. Whether we care for our loved ones at home or in a nursing facility, every day isn't going to be perfect. That is just a fact of life. However, it can be a blessing. My dad used to say the three most important words in the English language was, I need help. And when people would ask me how my mom's doing or they would look sad if they'd heard that she had Alzheimer's and uh, I would try to describe it as not as, her condition is not as troubling or difficult as I think people imagine. And uh, so I finally, I found the language, I said, well, mother eased into Alzheimer's. And I think when the family was all together, you know, there was some denial, not unexpected. Uh, some of, among my brothers and sisters, we of course didn't want to acknowledge and recognize that we were here, mother didn't. So we didn't want to. And then it was an acknowledgement through counsel with the doctor that this is where she is and you know in a bit of time you all will need to make some decisions and the best thing to do is to get professional guidance and help. And that can come of course in a variety of ways. Um, we asked friends who had been in the same uh, situation with their loved ones and that's where we got some, some advice and then we went to other professionals the anxiety and the distress that the family was experiencing, she wasn't experiencing necessarily. And what I discovered over time was that, you know, what appeared to be at the beginning a burden became a blessing. Many of us are at or about to enter that stage in life when it's time to care for parents or loved ones. We are not sure when it happened, but one day, we found ourselves discussing alternative living arrangements, in-home care, estates and trusts, and how to get a parent to doctor's appointments without missing work. It is a huge life change that can happen quickly and can get pretty overwhelming. It will help to know about the organizations and services out there that can help us manage it all effectively. The I Know Expo is a chance for us to talk with helpful people from those organizations and hear from experts about how best to prepare for that next stage. 
It is the first information expo of its kind in Lexington and completely free. For additional information about the expo, call 859-967-6088 or visit us online at www.inoexpo.org.